how cutting edge this car is with its long front end, snubbed back end, and rear wheel drive, the Air Flight is still old school muscle car. Listen to that muffler for even one second, and you'll realize that this beefy machine is just one of a new breed of vehicle that is throwing out what you thought you knew about how a car should look and feel. The Dodge Razor, the Super 8 Hemi, the Chevy SS, the Chrysler Crossfire, all muscle, all the time. But what if your vehicle had so much power that it wasn't an engine on wheels, it was an engine with wheels? I think, quite honestly, when it comes to crazy concepts, the Chrysler Tomahawk has got to be one of the, the craziest that have been around for a while. 500 horsepower and two wheels in front. The people that built it for Chrysler and Dodge did a magnificent job if you look at the workmanship and the detail in the, the vehicle itself. If it looks like it's just one big motor, that's because it is. But you won't find this engine in even the most high-powered Harley. How many cylinders do you think this double-wheeled mean machine has? Four, six, eight? It has 10 cylinders. It's an eight liter. It's the latest version of our Viper engine. What powers this came out of this, the world-famous Dodge Viper? By this point, you may be asking yourself one question. Why? When you think about it, we're a car company. We don't do motorcycles. The fact that the two top guys gave it the green light says a lot about their vision and their ability to see that far ahead. It is a good investment for us. It's a good marketing tool. It was created to, to get excitement for Dodge, and it did exactly that. And it really does that when you fire it up in the middle of a car show. Everybody comes running because they want to see what this 10-cylinder motorcycle is all about. The design intent with this project was probably first and foremost to package this huge motor in a way that was aesthetically acceptable as well as ergonomically functional. And also, the character of this motor being what it is, big, brutal beast, I tried to let that come through in the lines and the shapes. Most everything that's not motor is polished aluminum, even the wheels. But don't go calling the Dodge Tomahawk a motorcycle just yet. It's technically not a bike, because it has four wheels. And those wheels are like nothing you've ever seen. Watch closely how each one leans independently into a curve. Now you might be wondering what kind of rubber those four hubs can lay out. At 1,500 pounds, it will do zero to 60 in 2.5 seconds. Theoretically, it tops out at about 300 miles an hour. And with that kind of horsepower right at your fingertips, the Tomahawk is more than just unforgettable. What it feels like to ride, all that power, comes on really quick, actually, uh, at will. And there's one word for it, and that's addictive. And anybody who doesn't understand why do something like this need only get on it and uh, twist this. Whether it's power, performance, or sheer innovation, concepts push the boundaries of imagination. And if you come here to the hills of Pasadena, California, you'll find a place where it all begins at the Art Center College of Design, a world-famous art school with an intensive design program. Designers start here when they're passionate about innovative automobiles. I think I've seen some people cry. I think I cried once. If you want to do automotive design, this is the most hardcore program that you can involve yourself in. Generally, I'm here all the time. I don't really have life anymore. And in this serious design studio, students build prototype models just like the professionals. And their final projects end here, with scale-sized concept cars presented to the entire industry. The translation between the paper and the actual 3D model is its kind of inspirational, I guess you would say. But there's a lot to do between paper and glossy models like these.
Hundreds of hours go into making just one of these innovative models. But the high-intensity program at Art Center has produced some of the most well-known designers today, including the person who designed the new Volkswagen Beetle, and the Ford 49 concept car, and this brand new Mustang. I think there's no doubt that he's considered one of the finest designers in the world, along with another dozen. I've been extremely lucky. Uh, a friend of mine, Ed Golden, says I have the fortunate attribute of always being able to fall up. Legendary car designer Jay Mays also designed this car. 500 horsepower, 500 foot-pounds of torque wrapped in a, a classic body shell that's arguably one of the most beautiful mid-engine cars of all time. They displayed a show car, which was the Ford GT40. Once again, the public went crazy. They yelled in unison in Chicago and in Detroit and you name where, build it. The people around the vehicle just kept telling us to build the car. And they did. If you thought creating a scale model of a concept car was difficult, watch the time lapse for the clay model of the GT40. Forget your everyday enamel paint. That polymer skin can be rubbed on, then adjusted to smooth out any imperfections. And if the final concept looks familiar, that's because it's a brand new version of a champion. A car that's arguably the most famous Ford ever is the GT40 that won Le Mans in 66, 67, 68, and 69. Race day at Le Mans. And that was really important for the country. I mean, we were not only going to space at that point, we were going to take on the world of racing. The candy-colored Fords are the fastest, with six of the top ten starting positions. After performance builder Enzo Ferrari rejected Henry Ford's attempt to purchase the Italian automaker, Ford Motor Company built its own high-performance car. And in 1969, at a record-breaking 217 miles per hour, the GT40 left every Ferrari it took on in the dust. This four-time winner of one of the world's most famous races disappeared into automotive history until Jay Mays took the lead in convincing Ford to redesign the GT40 into a concept car and now into a production vehicle. We're reintroducing what is a vehicle that I simply think can't be improved upon, but we're putting modern mechanicals, modern safety, modern engineering, and putting it at a price, uh, although very expensive, is uh, in, in the world of supercars, actually a bargain. And what is a bargain for a supercar? It's obviously going to be, be a vehicle that costs well over $100,000. Mario Andretti equals that mark in his Ford Mark IV. This car doesn't have a typical business plan. It was more for creating a, an image and an, an aura and recreating some history. There's the checkered flag. It's an all-American win. The, the GT40 may look like an old favorite, but it proves that designers who build concept cars can determine what you drive when you go to work or when you're on vacation. And as long as designers are thinking of innovative and exciting ways to let you travel where you want to go, the auto industry will continue to grow and change. There aren't that many great automotive designers in the world. Uh, there's, a, there's a handful, but uh, those handful of designers usually have a team of very hungry young designers under them that are continuing to drive them forward and make them look for new solutions that are going to please customers. So kids coming out of school today have got to, to be obsessed with what I always call cutting the old man's knees off. I want to create things that have a strong emotional impact on people in a positive way. Whatever it is, I want to create it hardcore. I just would like to see my design out there. I'd, I'd like to see it affect somebody in some way. So that 50 years later, to somebody, it could be a classic. Concept cars are the brains. In studios around the world, car makers design, test, and build just a handful of concept vehicles every year, like this Chevrolet SSR concept pickup truck. And here, at the GM Design Center in Warren, Michigan, 
state-of-the-art computer modeling allows designers to analyze and change designs in advanced environments like this, where life-size 3D computer models of concept cars can be studied even before they're built. But this secret design center isn't open for tours. In fact, they don't want you anywhere near the place. There's a tremendous effort placed on uh, confidentiality and uh, secrecy in the marketplace because it's so competitive. With billions of dollars in new car sales at stake each year, automakers are in constant battle for your loyalty. That's why the latest advancements in concept technology and design are treated with extra care. The concepts are the crown jewels of the company in, in many ways, and you don't want them to know even what you're thinking. So you keep that locked down as tight as you can. I think the, the secrecy is, is very, very important. It, it, it adds to the excitement. And in this 18-wheeler, there's one vehicle that was kept so top secret, just a few engineers and designers even knew of its existence. It's a make of automobile that has always represented the finer things in life. This car is destined to be a classic. The whole car is about premium, the ultimate of everything. Hear the name, see the logo, and two things come to mind, luxury and power. And Cadillac may be one of the best when it comes to its concept cars, especially with this. I think the Cadillac Sistine was a interesting and bold statement. It has some terrific styling cues to it and it's gotten a tremendous amount of attention for Cadillac, which is exactly what they intended to do when they created it. Very dramatic proportions, long hood, long wheelbase, big wheels, short overhangs. Uh, it's very wide and low. Based on groundbreaking Cadillac concept cars from just a few years ago, like the innovative Evo, the Cadillac 16 also gets its look from one car that's over 70 years old. You can see various cues of, of this car from, from, you know, Cadillacs of the past. Believe it or not, this is only one of three 1931 convertible Cadillacs known to exist. And it was a major inspiration for the new version. On the outside, they may not seem alike. But take a look at this number. And take a look at this number. And take a look under this clamshell hood. And this clamshell hood. And the relationship is obvious. Many people ask, you know, why we did the 16-cylinder the engine. Not eight, not 10, not even 12, 16 cylinders. And if the number of pistons doesn't make you take notice, then look a little closer. 1,000 horsepower makes this Cadillac engine one of the most potent power plants to ever come out of Detroit. It's a legitimate 16-cylinder engine and not a, not a copy or a cobbled-together piece. And if you think this aluminum skin, glossy black thoroughbred is the ultimate on the exterior and under the hood, then you might want to take a look at the interior, too. Really, you're just swathed in wonderful materials like Tuscany leather, burl walnut, everywhere and a silk carpet that you hardly want to have your shoes touch. Really an exquisite place to be. And if a genuine Bulgari clock doesn't make you drool, then take a closer look at the steering wheel and you'll know you're experiencing one of the finest concept vehicles ever built. When you first sit in the car, you, you can't help but be taken by the crystal badge in the steering wheel. How much would you pay for a piece of cut crystal like this? Try $8,000. It's just another one of the details in this car that's designed to make you believe one thing. This is a car that's, you know, just monumental in scale. Concept cars are all about elegance, styling, power, and now this.